I never want to hear 60 FPS in games does not matter. <clears throat> it 100% matters. Now I know, I know. The last two gens of gaming, the PS4 and PS5, the Xbox One and the Xbox Series S and X, have focused on marketing at 4K and ray tracing since it's catchier and it makes more sales and it's easier, it's easier to understand and all that. But please, can we stop with this notion that 60 FPS is not needed slash does not matter? I'm not even talking about 120 FPS, 144, 165, anything like that. Those are obviously better. And as someone who uses a monitor at 1440p at those higher refresh rates, I can tell you 100% that it matters. But I just wanna focus on 60 right now because that is what most consoles can actually hit. It's what we used to be able to hit back in the day and it needs to make a comeback. A lot of games that released back in the day used to hit 60 FPS a majority of the time. Now, obviously I know games back then weren't as complicated and obviously the graphical fidelity is nowhere near what it is today. But now with this focus on 4K and ray tracing, games are not only more complex, but it means hitting something like 60 FPS is harder to achieve unless the development team really gets something like a full year to really optimize the game. Looking at you, Tears of the Kingdom. But unfortunately, most companies and publishers don't allow for that because it's, they feel it's wasted money even if it means the game would be at a stellar quality release and would get them more sales, which means more money. They're not willing to put the time into that. So the question is, should developers focus on a smooth experience like 60 FPS or 4K and ray tracing? We gotta talk about it, let's get into it. Hey everyone, Town here with Direct Gaming, and if you enjoy the content, a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated. It allows us to create more content to give to you. Also, comment down below, which do you personally prefer? Not anyone else, I wanna know what you personally prefer, 60 FPS or 4K slash ray tracing? Let's get started. Now, what even stirred this video into my thoughts to even make this is that I just finished playing the latest update for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And, oh boy, this is what a performance mode should be at release. Seriously, if you have not played the game since it released or heard about how bad the performance was, whether it was console or PC, and just didn't want to buy it or play or anything like that, I got two things to tell you. First, number one, good. Good job. Speak with your wallet. Great job for waiting. That's exactly what everyone should do when it comes to games that are released in these bad states. The second thing I need to tell you is now is the time to try it. You can probably find it on sale or at a pretty good discount, whether it's going to something like the PlayStation Store, since they actually have a sale going on right now, the time it's recording in September 2023, or you can wait a little bit longer for the winter Steam sale, always has great stuff. You can probably find it on Amazon, maybe Xbox has a sale going on. Regardless, there is some sale at some time that you'll be able to find this game, and I highly recommend it. One thing that was consistent across all the reviews, or at least most of the reviews, when it came to Jedi Survivor was that the game overall was good, slash is good. Everything from the story, the characters, the improved combat and everything, great. The problem, the performance. For the most part, I would say that is fixed now, at least playing in performance mode. It's a lower resolution, so something probably more along the lines of 1080 maybe, I don't know, maybe Digital Foundry can do another updated video on that, that'd be great. Link it down below if you possibly find anything like that. But regardless, doing something like that, I personally think is the way to play it. Now, if you prefer something more like 4K, that's totally fine. They do have that 4K quality mode, but it definitely, you can definitely feel it, just my personal opinion. But I will note here that everything from like going from gameplay into a cutscene or any kind of smooth transition or anything, not everything has been hammered out or anything like that. So if you are expecting this to be like basically perfect, no, it's not there. So if you want to wait longer, that's perfectly fine. I understand that. Wait for an even deeper sale. Wait for like, you know, 10, 20 bucks or something like that. 100% understand. But if you're somebody who bought the game, but then saw the reviews and then didn't play it, or you got through the first level or anything like that, or you're thinking about picking it up because you really like the story and you want to continue from the first one, this is definitely a chance to get it. Again, you can get it on sale. No problem. When I heard that the big patch had come and that it was fixing all of the quality and performance modes and everything like that, I was like, did it really like it, it just appeared out of nowhere but two things were crossed on my mind one the pc version compared to the ps5 and xbox series s and x version are a little bit different in terms of what's wrong with it 
From what I understood, the performance mode on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox consoles was a little bit not as bad, I would say, but the PC version, oh boy, that had a lot of issues when it came to the performance and everything like that. So if you wanna deep dive into the PC side of the game, which I personally don't have, I played it on the PS5 to check it out. And even I could tell a difference just simply from that. I'm gonna leave a link to Luke Stevens video. He makes great content as well. Go check him out. I'll leave it in the top right corner and pin down in the comment below. Check his video out. He goes over it in terms of the PC and everything. Generally, he does a lot of his PC reviews in a combination of like a high tier PC, but also a more, I guess, mid to low PC. I think he said he uses like a 2080 on one of his reviews that I remember seeing. So, I mean, considering that the average graphics are this day in terms of the ones you can actually find, I'm not saying everyone has these, but in terms of the ones you can find, generally around the, you know, 6800 XT, give or take, to a 3080. I'm not, I, I know those aren't exactly equal comparisons or anything like that, but I'm just saying around there generally. So for him to test it on something like a 2080, or anything like that, that's definitely really good because um, it shows a more lower, you know, settings and everything like that. So if it can work there, then usually it should work on the higher cards and everything like that. So regardless, I would definitely say check that video out if you want more of a PC dive into it. Now, if you're just looking for a general dive slash onto the consoles and everything, you're in the right place. I tried to set on my PlayStation 5 and as you can see on the B-roll right now, I booted up a fresh new game. Well, actually, I take that back. First, I just simply explored the world real quick. I fought a quick little legendary boss because I had beaten the game already because I needed to for content and everything. And holy crap, I could tell the difference. Not necessarily 100% much when I was just kind of roaming around in the quote unquote open world on one of the plants or anything. But the moment I entered into any combat scenario, I could tell or any of those places where it doesn't have to render quite as much like as in terms of like your home world and everything and you go into a more of a just it's like a section of an area or anything like that i could absolutely tell the difference i switched back and forth hopefully you're seeing that on screen right now i would go into quality mode which is the typical 4k 30 fps and you know some amount of ray tracing or something like that i would go from there and i just spun my camera around and i could see the you know it's not as slow as my hand coming across the screen right now but I could definitely tell the difference because the moment, the moment I switched it back to performance mode, I was like, smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. This is why 60F is needed, people. <sighs> I know I sound like a broken record, but still, it just, it felt so good. And yes, I clearly on screen right now and probably some other parts of the B-roll, I had to relearn parts of the game in terms of the combat blocking and all that stuff. So yeah, I'll probably look like an idiot right now on screen in terms of my gameplay per se. 100% understand, but I could still react enough. I could still see it right there. And I'm just like, yes, this is improved. This is definitely the update we were looking for. It just really wish it had been there from day one. And I know why it's not sometimes, but at the same time, it's like, it's, it's, it just feels good. It feels good. So I've seen this debate go on for years and years, you know, why? don't we focus more on 60 FPS? Why don't we focus on 4K more? Why even worry about this and everything like that? So obviously it's harder to see what a difference between 30, something like 30 FPS and 60 FPS is if you don't have a monitor or a screen that can show you that, right? Most modern monitors these days or screens, even on phones and everything, you should be able to see 60 FPS, not everything obviously, but a good majority of screens these days should be able to show you 60 fps and if you were to put a game especially something that's more action heavy which by the way when it comes to a game that's more adventure or maybe like a puzzle game or anything like that absolutely 100 if you can't hit 60 fps on that i actually i understand i understand that 100 30 fps is perfectly fine for something like that but for anything when it comes to like maybe a first person shooter some kind of action game that requires precise timing and everything 60 fps needs to be the standard it needs to be there for something like that because it does make the difference so then why is it not focused on or why should we focus on it you know depending on what side of the equation you're on and everything like that well like i said up until i would say recently and even still to this day at some point a lot of people still like to claim that there is no difference between 60 fps and lower fps's i mean obviously if you have something like 10 versus 60 yeah but a lot of people are going to say that eh, 30 is fine doesn't really need or anything like that clearly they haven't truly seen the difference again take two screens of a 30 fps game that again focuses on something like that again if it's like a puzzle game then yeah you're not going to notice a difference but take like a first person shooter take something like star wars here 
take 30 FPS, then take 60 FPS, put them next to each other and play the game. Or again, I know obviously not everyone has multiple consoles or anything like that. Take your game, however you're playing it and play it at the mode that you like, or you just normally play at. Then I know it's compressing everything. Take a YouTube video or something at 60 FPS or the opposite or whatever it is, put it next to each other and play, you know, try to get into the right area where the person's playing and try to look at the difference. I can almost guarantee you, you're going to see the difference. It makes that much of a difference, especially because most modern TVs, like the one that's right next to me right now, those can hit 60 FPS, the whole 120 FPS and the higher ones and stuff like that for TVs, at least. I know those are a little bit more scarce and everything. Monitors definitely have it a little bit more of an advantage because the average monitor to this day, again, goes from 60 up to 165 or even higher refresh rates. I mean, I can probably go into Amazon right now, find like a 27 inch 1080p monitor that goes up to 144 Hertz, no problem you're gonna see that absolutely no problem, which is great. So the big question becomes then, if 60 FPS makes a difference when it comes to these types of particular games and everything, why is it not the norm as much? Or why is it that we will hear about it and say, oh yeah, we've got 60 FPS, but then let's like, is it really making a difference? Like, I'm not only looking at Star Wars, I'm looking at one of my favorite games, Final Fantasy 16, where their performance mode, it's not necessarily 60 FPS, playing the entire game like they still drop down into 30 and 45 fps at like 720p or something like that until you go into combat which again to their credit that's the important part if they had to make compromises and everything that is where the compromise is but at least the combat is the smooth 60 fps that you would expect lower resolution obviously yes because again it's not as simple as making as flipping a switch and saying you know what i want 60 fps boom everything else stays the same there is a difference between saying let's say 4k and 30 and 4k 60. there is a big difference in terms of how much strain that takes on the parts of your console or your computer it takes a lot out of it especially on consoles where a lot of these games these days are focusing on not only 4k but also ray tracing there is a reason that you see the option to turn ray tracing off on something like a pc title of any game particularly but ray tracing itself takes so many resources i personally don't know why any game tries to focus on that right now i feel like the technology is too new in my personal opinion still i know ray tracing has been around for a long time i remember back in the day where like battlefield 1 and battlefield 5 were you know showing off ray tracing and everything for their areas and the water reflections and everything like that like i get that i truly do because again it's good marketing same with 4k it's easy to slap onto the box 4K, 8K, whatever the case is, right? It is easy to do that than simply say 60 FPS when the average gamer does not know what 60 FPS means. They, it, it, a lot of people still don't, and I don't blame them. I'm not blaming them or, or anything for that. Just it's easier marketing. But ray tracing especially takes so many resources. Majority of people when it comes to PC, unless it's like playing some game from like four years ago and you've got a 4090 or something like that. And you say, yeah, you know what? I can actually handle ray tracing and everything like that. The average gamer, it's funny enough, they, they market ray tracing and 4K to like the average gamer because a lot of them don't see the difference or they, you know, they don't care about it, which is fine. But then something like ray tracing, nine times out of 10, you're not going to notice ray tracing either, unless you are literally stopping and trying to like look inch by inch on the screen at something and compare it in different modes and everything. You are, now you might notice it for maybe like a particular cutscene or like maybe an opening intro area, which to be fair, that's what a lot of games will do these days. They make the opening hours the most polished and clean that you will ever see. And then later on in the game, it might not look that way potentially, depending on what type of, type of game it is and everything like that. But something like ray tracing, I, I really wish developers would not focus on right now. I don't care what Nvidia says or anyone has said in the past where it's like ray tracing is a new thing and everything like that. Got to make it good and everything. Ray tracing is a load of BS in my personal opinion. And we're, we, it was introduced too early. It's kind of like, it's kind of like my opinion when it comes to 4k, right? I think going from 1080p to 4k that jump I think was a little too much. I wish they had gone to 1440p first, right? Allow for the industry to slowly make that advance and everything. Now I know, again, same thing as before, 1440p doesn't sound as the magnificent, 
4K and everything like that. But the jump from 1080p to 4K, the amount of pixels and everything, that is huge. That's a big leap compared to something like simply going from 1080p to 1440p. There's still a jump there, but it's nowhere near as big from 1080p to 4K in terms of development and all the pixels and everything, right? Then on top of that, for, so let's, let's look at it this way. 4K is already making your system work its butt off essentially, right? Whether it's console or PC, doesn't matter, right? It's making it work its butt off. Then on top of that, you have to try and make sure it can run at a smooth frame rate, right? You don't want your game running at 10 FPS or anything like that, because then it's a slideshow at that point. So you want to make it at either like a 30 FPS or a 60 FPS. Now, 60 FPS is always going to be better than 30 FPS. Doesn't matter who you talk to. If they know about FPS, they're going to be like, yeah, no, 60 all the time, regardless, doesn't matter. But then on top of that, you're going to start throwing in ray tracing because again, ray tracing is that marketing aspect of it and it makes it look better and everything, right? So then after that, it comes out to, okay, so what do we cut out of this? What do we say like, okay, you know what? We got to knock this down a peg or two, right? Well, you can't knock down the 4K. That's your marketing right there. Can't knock down the ray tracing. Or if we do, it's got to be you know part of the ray tracing or anything. So what's left? We're going to knock down the frame rate from 60 to 30, right? And again, if development teams are given the proper time to truly have those two modes where you do have a quality mode at 4K 30, parts of ray tracing or however they want to make it or anything like that. And then at the same time, you have a solid 1080 60 FPS or maybe even a higher FPS at that point, then great, awesome. I wouldn't even be making this video if that was the case because that was the initial promise i would say for the most part especially on the console side of things where it was like you know what we're gonna have two modes we're gonna have a performance and we're gonna have an actual quality mode for you know 90 percent of the games to come out great perfect that's where it's gonna be but as we've seen over the last few years that is not the case either the performance mode is basically the quality mode there's no difference which basically means that if you're somebody who's used to seeing the 60 fps or any of those higher refresh rates it doesn't work as well and it's just stuttering all over the place right the other side of it is that some games just simply are not shipping with that sometimes i'm looking at something like redfall right or even looking at, at other games that have come out and been like yeah we have to delay the performance or we have to delay this part of the mode because it's going to take longer and longer to really optimize and everything like i said you simply can't go into a game and flip a switch and it just brings everything down right you've got to make sure that everything is working the way it's intended to in both of those modes. This is why like with something like the Switch and Tears of the Kingdom, I mean, we always rag on it for being like 10 year old plus technology at this point, and it can only hit 30 FPS. But for something like Tears of the Kingdom, I was actually okay hitting 30 FPS for two reasons. Number one, they got an entire extra year to optimize the game. Even playing in handheld on my airplane ride, going to and from Japan for my vacation, I could tell, yeah, this works great. This is working. This is this is pretty fluid and everything. And it works that extra year of, you know, going in and tweaking things and making sure everything works and everything like that is great. But there are other games that have proven that they don't have as much time or they're not given as much time to actually make the game optimized, right? You always hear that word optimized, optimized, meaning that it, it works the way it's supposed to, right? There's no Again, slideshow in terms of the frame rate, there's no you know dips in terms of the resolution or anything like that, or at least as, as close to you can get it as possible. So, but again, something like Final Fantasy 16 or even something like Redfall essentially, right? Where Redfall doesn't even have its 60 FPS mode. And I know they've claimed that they're gonna keep working on it to finally get at that mode and everything. I'm like, dude, just drop that game, focus on other games for Xbox or any other consoles for that mode, right? It's, you know, and it makes me wonder and curious how something like the Final Fantasy 16 game is going to be on the PC port, right? Because they stated now recently that they are actually working on that. And I know that the leaders of the FF16 team are actually very like, you know, we want to make sure this is a good, solid port and everything, which is great. I'm all for that. But I really hope they are actually given the time to make sure that you can hit those higher frame rates or you can hit those higher resolutions or anything like that, but make sure it works at all different levels, right? Which unfortunately, that's the that's like one of the ups and downs to PC gaming, for example, right? It's like it allows for different levels of hardware and everything, but that means a lot longer time to make sure it's optimized for every possible outcome when it comes to the hardware that's in your machine. So it's it can be hit or miss sometimes. So I'm really hoping that they can hit something like that. But that's, you know, where 60 FPS and something like 4K slash ray tracing really sits right now. 
And again, I get that marketing is much easier when it comes to something like 4K and everything. And I don't have much hope, I would say personally, for this current generation. They said last generation was supposed to be hitting the 60 FPS, didn't happen. They said this generation was supposed to. Fool me twice, right? Whatever the next generation is, at least according to Phil Spencer, I'm guessing 2028, based on that whole FTC hearing thing that happened a few months ago and everything like that, this needs to hit 60 FPS for every game coming out. So I'm not even asking for 120 or anything like that. And I know we've obviously passed the realm where I could have said, you know, hey, 1440p 60 FPS the entire time or anything like that, right? But it's not. So I'm hoping that the technology has advanced enough by the time we get to the next gen that they don't consider 8K because 8K TVs are not a thing in the majority of households right now, right? 4K is, that's fine. I don't know even know who I'm talking to at this point right now because I know, I already know the dilemmas that developer development teams and all that kind of stuff have to deal with. I get that, but I would hope that they will try their absolute best to make sure they have a solid performance mode when it comes to a game that releases. Now, I don't know if that's because it's held back by something like maybe say, for example, Series S, and especially if you're trying to release it on multiple consoles, if you're only releasing it on one platform, I know a lot of people prefer that in terms of developers and everything. That's been a big headline for the last year and a half or so. I get that, I really do. But I really hope that 60 FPS is the standard going forward for the next gen consoles coming out. Because like I said, I doubt it's going to be that way for this current gen right now. I'm talking Xbox and PlayStation, right? Nintendo, I know the rumors are starting to come out now about their next console for 2024 and supposedly hitting 10, 1080p 60 FPS is nothing for them, right? It's it's like, great, awesome, they can do it. So hoping that happens. But in terms of the next gen consoles and everything, please, to you, the best of your ability, make 60 FPS the goal. But please do ignore the ray tracing or do very little of it. I know, again, it's big marketing and NVIDIA and all of them are going to be like, no, 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 ray tracing is awesome and everything. Please ignore it. Make the game that you want to make. Optimize the game to the console area that you are trying to get to. And if it's needed for a particular game, hit the 60 FPS. That's just my personal opinion. I know this kind of went maybe more towards a little more just rambling in terms of a video and everything, but I really, really hope that 60 FPS and higher frame rates become the norm over flashy substance because let's be honest half the time games are not even hitting 4k that that's honestly the thing that can blow my mind sometimes it'd be like you know you'll see someone say like oh yeah you're in the performance mode you're hitting 720 at 60 fps or not even 60 fps most of the time or half the time or anything like that and i'm like yeah and they're not hitting 4k half the time either so you know <laughs> depending on how again optimized the game is and everything like that so regardless i hope that the next gen can really do this i'm I'm not going to keep hope up though. I'm going to come in with a steady head and be like, all right, let's see. What do you got? You got 60 FPS? Nope. Okay. I'm not shocked at all. Or hey, you got it? Awesome. I'm all for it. Let's go. That's what I'm hoping for. So but anyway, today we talked a ton about 60 FPS, performance mode, quality, ray tracing, and more. So now I want to ask you, what do you think consoles need to focus on more? I think they should focus on 60 FPS? 4k ray tracing in between do you think they're going to focus on what they're focusing on right now and for the next gen line of consoles in 2028 or whenever it happens that's when they're finally going to do it again we've heard that twice now but regardless let me know your thoughts down below thank you so much for everyone today for watching today's video especially if you stuck around to the very end it helps the channel out a lot and i hope you can support the channel by any means necessary even if it's just a simple like that actually really does help us it's free and it really does help us. I'm in town with Direct Gaming. Thank you so much again for everyone that joined us in the video. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Johnny.